Hey guys, and welcome back to Sports Design School. Now I'm super excited for today's video. This is something that you guys have been requesting a lot of recently, and it's gonna be awesome diving in and showing you guys hands-on getting started with After Effects. Now, let me back up a little bit to explain kind of why After Effects is important and what you can use it for. Now, a lot of you guys keep up with social design teams, uh, keep up with stuff on social media, even stuff that like Bleacher Report and ESPN put out, and a lot of it is animation based. There's a lot of motion graphics, there's a lot of animations and cool videos, and some of you might be asking, how can I do those things for myself? Now there are ways to do videos in Photoshop. Trust me, I was there at one point doing videos in Photoshop, but it is not ideal. It is not the best way of putting together cool looking animations in motion graphics. But the main tool, the industry standard that everyone uses is Adobe After Effects. Now if you have Adobe Photoshop or the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, there's a good chance that After Effects is somehow included in your Creative Cloud bundle, and so it might just be as simple as downloading it to your computer from your Creative Cloud plan. But today I'm just gonna be walking through just the basic layout of After Effects, but specifically from a Photoshop perspective. So instead of walking through and trying to teach it like it's something brand new, I'll be walking you through as if this was Photoshop and talking about the different layouts and things that you can use and to better understand After Effects in general. So to get started, I'm just gonna go through here and talk about this basic screen that we see right now. Now I have this layout set to default. It's kind of similar to Adobe Photoshop where you're able to go through and rearrange your workspace and have different layouts and things like that. But to keep it simple, I'm just gonna start with default for right now. Now over here on the left, you can see this column right here that says project with some text next to it that says effect controls. On the right, we have this text that says composition with some bars over here on the very right hand side. And then in the bottom you can see we have this thing that says none with what it looks like a little bit of a timeline bar right here. We have some tools kind of similar to the Photoshop tools up on the top. And that is about it as far as layout comes. But let's just say you're opening up After Effects and you want to get started and you want to know what is the first step. Well, if you're creating a motion graphic, all we're gonna do is hit New Composition. And what that will do is bring up a dialog box on our screen. Now, there are several different options that you can play around with here, but the basic ones are based on mobile devices and TVs and things like that. So for example, and this is kind of what shapes my, you know when you're creating a new document in Photoshop and it asks you like how big you want to make it and it's like how many pixels and sometimes people send them to me and the thing is like 60 inches by 55 inches and it's just this massive document but you have to think like how many times are you actually going to print that thing out on a 50 by 60 like sheet of paper never like you're going to need to design for the screen that you're working on and very similar here with After Effects you're going to want to use the dimensions that your design and motion graphic are actually going to show up on. So that means designing for phones, laptops, TVs, you name it. And so with that in mind, we're going to go about selecting these options for our motion graphic. So for our width, I'm going to just use 1920 and for our height, we're going to use 1080. Now that's just the basic HD dimensions for things like laptops, YouTube, you name it. For our pixel aspect ratio, make sure this is set to square. If it's set to anything else, your images and motion graphics will look distorted and not render the way that you want them to. And for our frame rate, we're gonna want it at 25. Now the basic ones are 25 or 30 because those are the pre-installed typical frame rates that most modern cameras use. Now if you want something a little bit higher in frame rate, like 60 or whatever, you can do that as well, but I don't recommend it for motion graphics. That's more if you're working in 60 frames per second editing video and stuff like that. For our resolution, we're just going to leave it at a quarter. It doesn't really matter for right now. You'll see what I mean in a second. And for our duration, we're just going to choose 14 seconds because most of these motion graphics are just quick 15 second loops 
on social media. And for a background color, again, this doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna choose white. And with that, we're just gonna hit OK. Now you notice, now we have this document set up right here, and it says comp one instead of none. But you can see in our timeline, there is nothing there for us to edit. So this is kind of where we get into the basics of After Effects. When you wanna create something in After Effects, so let's just say we wanna type something out. Let's just say someone's name. How do you go about doing that? Well, it's a little bit of a different process. You can't just go up and hit the text tool and then start typing. You need to actually go through and go up to Layer, New, Text. So anytime you're creating a new layer in After Effects, you're gonna go up to Layer, New, and then choose whatever you wanna create. So for now, I'm just gonna type in Sports. And as you can see, my text is not showing up. But my character window has popped up on the right side, very similar to how Photoshop does it. Our character window allows us to play around with our fonts, weights, spacing, basically everything our character dialog box does in Photoshop. We can even change our fill color just by clicking and changing just like that. You can change your font just by typing in your font. As simple as that. And you can drag and scale up and scale down your text. Now, it's cool playing around with these things in this dialog box, but very similar to Photoshop, you're able to just click and drag your layer wherever you want to. That's often why I describe After Effects as the Photoshop of video editing. But so now we just have our sports text positioned wherever, and I'm just gonna leave it there for now. But let's say we want it to be aligned to the center. We can just go up to Align and choose Horizontal and Vertical Alignment for our text. Now that's pretty simple. But what if we want to create a simple rectangle shape? Well, we can go up to Layer, New, Shape Layer. And then select our Rectangle tool and just click and drag just like that. Now you can see, similar to Photoshop, our Shape dialog box pops up on the top bar here. And I'm just gonna click and for our stroke, I'm gonna choose black. For how heavy, we can drag to the left and to the right. And I'm just gonna choose something like 43. Now similar to what we did for our text, we can align horizontally and vertically to make sure everything is lined up. And as always, we can click on our layer and move it around as much as we want to. Just like that. And so it is that easy. Now the same could be said for if you wanna animate an image or bring in an image. All we're gonna do is go over to our project. You can double click right here. And we're just gonna select this image right here. Now this is just a photo of a Georgia softball player, as you can see in this little preview panel. Now let's say I wanna bring in this image into my motion graphic. I can just click and either drag it directly into my panel or down on my Layers tab. So let's just bring it to the very top and position it just like that. Now similar to Photoshop, we have adjustment transform tools just like that, but I find the easiest way about going about scaling down images is just by clicking on your layer and hitting S on your keyboard. And then you're able to scale it down in an easier way. And that is how you import images in Adobe Photoshop. Now you can import all kinds of images, so cutouts, images, anything that you could possibly want, you can import in to Adobe After Effects. But what is the beauty of After Effects? What actually makes it important? Well, it comes in the ability to edit and animate things. So I'll turn off this layer for now, similar to how we would in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how we can animate something as simple as possible in After Effects. For this, I'm also gonna turn off my rectangle and we're just gonna start with the sports text. 
Now let's say we want this sports text to start at the bottom of our screen and move up. Well, how would we go about doing that? So we have our sports layer selected, and this will introduce one of the fundamental concepts of After Effects, and that's this thing called keyframes. So keyframes are animation points that allows you to set a start point and an end point for any particular effect that you would like. If that sounds complicated, don't worry, I'm about to show you how to do it. So with my sports layer selected, I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard. And you'll notice that brings up this thing called position. Now if I move these around, it will move my position of my text, just like that. But let's just say I move it up like this, but as I scroll through my timeline, you can see there's no animation applied. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and move down to a couple of seconds. So let's say at three seconds in, we know we want our position to be right here in the middle. So we can go over and on our position settings, click this stopwatch. Now what that will allow us to do is set this particular position for this particular time and space. So whenever we get to three seconds, our sports text will be at this exact point. But let's go to the beginning. Let's say we want it to start at the bottom like we had talked about before. Well, we can go through and just drag our text down just like that. And now you notice that there's a bit of a line on our screen. And you can see we have two keyframes right here. Now if I were to press space on my keyboard, you can see our animation plays just like that. Now you might be thinking, well that's kind of dumb, like what's the point in that? And I'll show you how powerful this can be when you apply multiple effects at once. So let's just say we have this scale up just like this, that's pretty slow. But let's say I wanna also add an opacity fade in to where something starts off completely invisible and slowly fades into our design. Well, we can do that in a very similar way. By pressing T on your keyboard, you're able to bring up your opacity slider. Now we know at three seconds we want our opacity to be at 100, so we can go ahead and click that keyframe. And let's start at the very beginning, and we want our opacity to be at 0%. Now we can watch as both of these effects are applied at the exact same time. Just like that. Now let's say we want to speed these effects up just a bit. Well, we can do that by pressing U on our keyboard to bring up all of our keyframes. And then we can then select both of these keyframes right here and click and drag to the one second mark. So now these effects will be applied in one second. If we want to speed it up even more, we can keep going, bringing them as close together as we wish to really add that animation effect. Just like that. And those are the basics of After Effects. Now I'll be putting out more in-depth videos on some of the cool effects that you can do, particularly in sports design, animating PSDs and things like that, that really spice up your design game. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at this. We'll have an another After Effects tutorial coming out very soon, so make sure you stay tuned to our channel and subscribe so you don't miss out on that. But other than that, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please drop a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video.